saw the shot and follow it out. All right. Well, welcome back, folks, to another video with Fly Fishing with Jeff. And here we are on the very upper, upper St. Croix. Behind me, about two miles, is St. Croix Lake. And interestingly enough, if you go up to the end of St. Croix Lake, let me look at this guy real quick. Ah, oh, that's not a bad starter. If you go up to the end of St. Croix Lake, my wife Vicki and I did last week, and we hiked the portage from the St. Croix over to the Brule. There's a nice beginner smallmouth, about two minutes in. Beauty. Let you go back. That is one, that portage from the St. Croix over to the Brule, or from the Brule to the St. Croix, has been used for, wow, they don't really know how long, 400 years for sure for the modern day Native Americans. And um, if you ever get an opportunity and you like to read that kind of thing, there's a book out <coughs> that I just read here a couple months ago called Cecilia. And it's about an Ojibwe woman from 1839 to her death in like 1870 something written by her grandson and it talks about that portage well the neat thing about that is that's the continental divide so that allows you to go, uh, go in either direction and get from the Atlantic to the Gulf as you come up you would be coming up Lake Superior across the Brule who oh, got hooked here across the Brule um, River up to the Portage which is a little over two miles but it's pretty rugged pretty amazing and then into the St. Croix and the St. Croix then down to the Mississippi and and so on so it's really a, a neat area oh there's one chasing following wait nope oh maybe may have lifted too quick on him so we did that just last week that kind of ties the whole thing together and wow in the book Cecilia you'll uh, understand that she did that in 1864 with three kids youngest one was a year and a half old and a 16 foot birch birch bark canoe that she had to portage up and over and wow, just crazy stuff. So if you are ever looking for a book, something interesting to read, I would highly suggest that it gives you a lot of information about this area and the uh, Native American population between the Dakota and the Ojibwe and the fur traders. And well, anyway, I could go on and on, but this is fly fishing. So that's what we're doing. So we're working our way down. Oh, I love the look of these shady spots right now. It's casting in the morning here. We're working our way down about five miles of the very upper St. Croix. Some of you may see the St. Croix down around Hudson or Stillwater and go, wow, this isn't the St. Croix. Well, I can guarantee it is. It's just the narrower version. And, uh, frankly the version I prefer so that's what we're doing I've got my seven weight I've got a sink tip one line with one of my reverse tied bait fish patterns and I'm hitting all these shady areas like right there in hopes of enticing like I did on that one one to come out and feed I also have in my with me today my seven weight uh, 10 foot rod floating line with the popper on and we're going to see how that works in some of these areas down through here too the water is down way down and uh, it's hard to believe it's down after being up as much as it was but it is and so that's what we're doing and so as you can see I, I can be very very efficient if I cast well and by casting well up here I've told you before you can't be shy you've got to get it right in like that right in under 
and uh, there's just too many aerial predators up here for these fish to come way out like some of the other places. So anyway, I've told you a little too much probably, but there you go. Come along with me and let's see what we can find today on our trip down the uh, amazing upper... Oh, there was one and I missed him. How did I miss him? Let's see if we'll come back here real quick. Now, might have been a little guy, but I sure enough missed him. Give him one more shot right in there. Nope. The Upper St. Croix. Is it not beautiful or what? Anyway, so that's what we're doing. We've got the day all to ourselves. Packed a little lunch and off we go. Well, here comes a deer. She does not know what I am. She's looking very curious at me. Very curiously at me. Let's see if I can get to my camera. shucks there we go came back and got it perfect oh you're going the hard way aren't you perfect oh come here come here come here come here come here get you out of here and not mess that hole up there might be one more laying right there boy that was good stuff Missed it, and then you got it, didn't you? Got that fast water moving into some soft water with a little bit of cover. It's in the shade. I mean, it's the it's the trifecta, so to speak. Yeah, little guy, a little darker. Let you go. camera running for you that fish he was in oh man not even six inches of water right there and as soon as my fly hit the water he cut across the pool and picked it up right back up in there yeah I just got tangled got to turn the camera off you know that's again I've said it already that's how it goes look at that though that's a that's a nice fish he was way up in there in those shallows excellent Come on in here, let's take a look at you. Boy, you you ran him down, didn't you? <clears throat> okay, easy now, easy, easy. Beauty, maybe a little 12 incher. All right, let's let you go back. How much? was one. Oh gosh. Stay hooked, man. That's a good one. Oh, that was exciting. He just couldn't stand it. I thought I saw him underneath that. Oh, come here. That's a good one. Oh, don't bust me now. Don't bust me. Let's 
you can tell, folks, I've switched to a uh, a popper, and I'm going to show you what it looks like here in just a second. I call it a bait fish or a shad popper. Oh, that's that's a dandy. That's a dandy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Now, oh, shucks. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what it's about. And he could not stand that. I had that this fly on the water for uh, probably 40 to 50 feet. Let me get this guy undone. I'll show you the fly here in just a second. Oh, that's a beaut. Look at that. That is a beaut. Let's just quickly see what he is. It's going to be 18 and a half, almost 19. Love it. Love it. Okay, here you go. Let you go back. And I'm going to show you what I got here. So I call these a shad popper. I don't tie these. These are fairly complicated. This one's beat up. It's only got one eye. Um, but here's the key to this whole thing. I'm kind of fishing the same thing above and below. As you can see, they kind of resemble the same fish going under the surface and over the surface. And in that case, I went to the top because the water is kind of shallow. And you can see there's a lot of foam and stuff back in here. And um, I was doing a lot of dragging and banging and stuff on the bottom. So again, this is my, this is another seven weight outfit. Oh, come on. And um, it's a 10 foot rod which is big rod. I like it that way because it allows me to stay down low here, keep my silhouette out of range, and then make those big casts. And I fished that, that fly. I just let it drift all the way through that pool with just an occasional twitch, and he finally took it right there where you saw it. That was, that was awesome. That's, that's textbook stuff beautiful up here today just absolutely beautiful oh not that one though come here oh goodness I caught up with him all right He and another one were following that fly. Boy, I don't know why they they sucked it in. I missed them twice, but finally, yep, barely here, barely. All right, easy now, easy. No, got to do the bottom lip. Dude. Here's a stocky, chunky. Little river smallmouth. There ever was one. That was I'm dying. Oh, there we go. He liked that. He was right under that beaver dam there. Jumper. Liked it. All right. Come on, come on in here. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, all right, I got you, I got you. Okay, go on, go grow up. Well, folks, that was about as exciting as it gets. 
I decided to switch to a popper and I made one little flip cast in there. Oh my gosh, I did not have the camera running. I know I've said that, but this big dude came out of the shallows and scared the crap out of me. Oh my gosh. That was too cool. Uh, he was in the right spot and I just literally first cast, roll cast, flip casted it to get the line out basically. That's crazy. Well, this is a good fish. Let's take a look at this one. We got it down deep. Holy cow. Come here. Come here. Yep. You did. You got it. Look at that, dude. Nice. Very nice. Boy, you wanted it. That was the right fly at the exact spot. See, you don't have to be very good. Just lucky. Let's see if we can get you one done here. Get that off the top of your tongue for you. Boy, he's very pretty. Leopard spotted, as I like to call him. Look at those spots. Look at that. Blends in. Just look how it blends in with those rocks. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be blending in, too, with the number of eagles and ospreys around here. Ah, well, that was, that was a great fish. There you go. Go have at it. Over the log, over the log. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was fortunate. That was fortunate. Oh, come here. Well, you're not a giant, but that was kind of exciting. Within about 200 yards of being done today.